Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show hosted by a French professor who later today will be having an interview with Anthony Fantano. And in that video, I plan on saying the following sentence. Hip-hop is the most important artistic movement in human history. It's something I've said a few times on this channel, and I think it's about time I explain myself. Like, like, what do I mean by that? Am I just being polemic? Am I just being hyperbolic? Right? So, let me describe this. This is hopefully for any new viewers I might get. Hello, may the melon be with you. And also, just for my viewers who have heard me say this sentence offhandedly, and they might wonder, like, does he really mean it, and what does he mean? Now, first of all, I'm saying hip-hop is the most important artistic movement in human history. I don't mean that like larger societal and cultural movements, you know, it's not, it's not more important than the Enlightenment or several organized religions or democracy or the internet. I'm talking about artistic movements, which is a big enough statement in and of itself. I am talking about music, literature, archi architecture, sculpture, art. I believe that through its ability to influence culture, to shape culture, to define culture, and to reflect the society in which it, it, it exists, hip-hop is the most important artistic movement in human history. Now, what gives me the right to say that? Not much. I'm just a guy on the internet like anyone else. I do have an under, undergraduate degree in art history. I have published a little in art history. I have a doctorate in literature. I am like a real deal academic. Like when I'm not on YouTube, I'm, I'm publishing in, in books like this. Okay, I have an article in there. It's a pretty good one. Check it out. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm educated. I have a doctorate in literature and I think a lot and all that. And I've really thought a lot about this as a fan of hip hop, as somebody who grew up with hip hop. Many of the music, many of the albums I listened to growing up are behind me. And I just realized, even if we compare it with some of the other contenders in this category, classical Roman architecture, Renaissance painting, realist novels, classical music, Baroque music, jazz music, rock and roll, even with all of those, I believe, and I'm here to convince you, that hip hop is more important than all of them. So I'm gonna give you some reasons why. This is the internet, so I'm gonna form it in a list, but it is me. Now, if you haven't watched my videos before, you might not know, I don't have a script. So I've already made a couple of flubs, a couple of mistakes. I'm gonna leave those in. I don't have a script, I have notes, and I don't edit. I just go one shot. That's just the way I like to do it. So you're gonna to have to bear with me while I come up with this list, but if you're paying attention, I'm giving a list of 10 reasons why, but maybe you can count up how many reasons I have actually given. Because like, there's gonna be a lot more than 10. But the number one reason why hip hop is the most important artistic movement in cultural history, it is, in my opinion, the best and most salient example of African American art. This is partly because it is built on and from all other previous African American forms of music, but especially because, unlike those other forms of music, it has never successfully been co-opted by white culture. Never been successfully completely co-opted by white culture. Of course, there is financial co-opting, there are culture vultures, there are vanilla ice. Vanilla ice does exist, <laughs> okay? I'm not saying that there is no racism in how hip hop is, is conceived of, is perceived, is consumed, is produced. But it has managed to stay largely by <clears throat> and still for African American culture. Jazz, rock and roll, blues, all over time, got co-opted, and not only did the people who make it shift, but the people who consumed it shifted as well. We are here well over 40 years into the existence of hip hop and that has not happened. Part of the reason why I believe is that this is where, you know, genius is everywhere, right? Like, like, like genius has no race, genius has no color or creed or whatever you wanna say that makes you sound like a, a speaker, you know? Genius doesn't have a race, but there are races in all, there are geniuses in all races and all creeds. And much of the African-American genius for the last 40 years has been going into this art form and strengthening it. Kanye, Kendrick, Tupac, I could keep going. <clears throat> so that's reason number one. And it's 
I think very important that we actually really appreciate how long it has stayed this way and how despite the efforts of greater culture to take this art form away, it has never actually fully succeeded. I think it's too late. I don't think it can be taken, but time will tell. Second reason why hip hop is the most important cultural, the most important artistic movement in human history. Not only is it, I think, the best example of African-American artistic excellence, it is also the best example of American artistic excellence. American in general. The thing about American excellence, and the thing about what makes America excellent, is based on immigration. Now, first of all, I need to acknowledge one of the two founding sins of our country, obviously, is the genocide of the native people who are living here. And I'm not addressing that in this video. I'm acknowledging it, though. Beyond that, once our country was founded and established, all of our strength, not some of our strength, all of our strength has come from the combination of many different influences. By the voluntary, and yes, involuntary, speaking of the other original sin of American creation, involuntary immigrants to our country. That's why I'm not a nationalist. But the reason that I love America is because of how well it represents the entire world, all of these influences at one. And hip hop music is not only combining all these other musics and all these other genres and all these other thoughts in the history of America and African American history, it also was started by immigrants. DJ Cool Herc is here because of immigration. The traditions that started in Jamaica and were adapted and molded in the South Bronx are what made this art form. It is a tangible and clear example that when I get to the parts of this list where I'm talking about how hip hop is the most influential force in the world right now, it all came because of American immigrant culture. So it was born of all of this. So it represents African American excellence, it represents American excellence. But the third part, and this is the part which many people don't know and don't talk about because they don't teach language. They don't think outside of the borders of the United States of America. It is also the most interesting way to study international art. See, the thing about hip hop is how easy it is to translate into other languages, how easy its forms and methods are to adapt by other people. And it is that reason that it has taken over the world. And I'm not being hyperbolic here. It's taken over the world. Every country has hip hop, has a hip hop scene. Now, on the one hand, it can do what it does in America. It can be the voice of the voiceless. If you take as an example, France, which is the country that I study, uh, I'm currently teaching a class right now on French hip hop music. And I'm talking about a lot of these themes. You know, the, the, the black and brown people who were there in France as a result of colonization and immigration and a lot of different questions throughout the 20th century, they didn't have a voice in popular culture. They just didn't have one. Thanks to hip hop, they do. Thanks to hip hop, they are now seen. They come from parts of the world that are unseen. They come from parts of the countries that are unseen. And through this music, they are seen. The power of hip hop is that ability to be the voice of the voiceless, unlike any other art that has ever come beforehand. Why do I sound crazy when I say this? Why are you not nodding your head in agreement and saying, God damn it, it's so simple. Why was I so narrow minded in thinking about this as just being a thing that some African Americans do and then some white people think they can do too? No, it is an international phenomenon that is the voice of the voiceless. And that's what we need in our civilization. That's what we need to grow as a civilization, to grow as human beings with each other, is to see each other. The same thing happens in England. So much of great English hip hop comes from that same dynamic, the post-colonial dynamic. Same thing happens in Canada. Same thing happens all over the world. But even when there is not that dimension, even when it is not a question of immigration, not a question of post-colonialism, even when countries are largely homogenous in terms of their ethnic makeup or their racial makeup, hip hop is still the voice of the voiceless. It can be the voice of the underclass. It can be the voice of the people who feel marginalized by society for any reason. 
the video that I'm going to be making with Anthony Fantano is going to be discussing Ukrainian rap music. Now, I wasn't even an expert on Ukrainian rap music before I, you know, I still, I'm still not an expert. I think I can talk about it based on my knowledge of international hip hop. Sorry, I'm going to be interrupted here by my dog, Bo. He's sitting on the dog bed. If you're going to watch my channel, you're going to have to deal with Bo. <laughs> Pretty soon he's going to start nibbling on his feet and then snoring. It, it's, it's part of my charm. You know, Ukrainian rap, even though it is largely white, largely the same ethnic makeup, it is still able to communicate so much about the fear of Russian dominance, the need for independence. So much of the human existence is able to be communicated through this art. And part of the reason why it's able to do this, it's able to expand so broadly, is the fourth reason hip hop is the most important artistic movement in human history. It is soccer, not hockey. Excuse me for my international viewers. I am talking about an American art. So I'm going to say soccer. Because if I say football, people are going to think I'm talking about football. It is soccer, not hockey. What do you need to play soccer? You need a ball and human beings. And that's it. You can have a wall. You can make your own goals. What is hockey? Hockey is you need pads. You need ice, you need sticks, you need pucks, you need space, you need so many resources. Rock and roll is hockey. Most music is hockey. You need all this support, all this space. What do you need to make hip hop? A microphone, a turntable, maybe a computer. You know, I could have made the analogy with basketball as well, but basketball, you, you need to hope that there's enough social services in play that you can at least have a net. So maybe I'll say it's basketball and not hockey. But that's the power of hip hop. It can be made without resources. Therefore, it can be exported without cost. How is somebody in Ukraine who cannot afford a guitar going to be a rock and roll star? They're not going to. How are they going to be a rap star? By writing words on a piece of paper. Which brings me to my fifth point of why hip hop is the most important artistic cultural movement in human history. Words. Words. So many words. When I do my reviews of hip hop, I try to focus on this because people take it for granted. A, a hip hop artist, a rapper, they have to fill, 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 fill so many words. And within those words, there's an amazing poetic capacity, a capacity to write poetry, to tell stories, to be political, to be personal, emotional, comedic. You can write rap songs for parties. You can write rap songs for funerals. Rock and roll, other forms of music, just don't have that much space. There isn't enough space to fill in all those words. You can have themes, you can allude to them, but you can't just have words, 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 words. And it is the ability to play with those words, to form those words, to move those words around, to combine them, to make things that are interesting, to play with cadence, to play with rhythm, that we have all the possibilities of poetry, all the possibilities of poetry, plus all the possibilities of, st of storytelling, plus all the possibilities of anything political. Anything where you're trying to express very deep, complicated ideas, hip hop as an art form gives you that space. And when that space is used well, it is unrivaled with the power that it has through hip hop. So those are the words. Let's, let's go to number six, the music of hip hop. This is maybe the hardest thing to defend because so much of hip hop is based on sampling, is based on minimalistic music, is not based on virtuosity. Even I, when I think about African American excellence throughout music history, and I think of Jimi Hendrix, and I think of Miles Davis, and then I think, Okay, future, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm not saying it's not true, but that's hard when you think about the, the technical excellence that's lost. But this is not thinking properly. We live in the postmodern age, which actually even that talks about there, early modernity and postmodernity. We live in the postmodern age, in which the feeling is that all the songs have been written. All the chord progressions have been made. All of the love songs that could possibly be written have been written. What remains to be done is combination, developments, hybridization, mixing, sampling, 
sampling jazz, sampling rock, sampling country, sampling everything, all of these things become more and more complex. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an echo, it's a, it's a way of seeing what postmodernity is, where we've already done everything, and what remains now to do is to play with what is there, to recombine it, to recontextualize it. And that is what hip-hop has done from the very beginning. It is a mistake to look at it and think that it is not art. In the same way it's a mistake to look at Andy Warhol's soup cans and say, well, that's just a soup can. No, it's not. It's recombining, it's recontextualizing. Beyond the fact, of course, that hip hop is also developing and there's plenty of artists who are musically very talented. And this is where the musically talented people are going into. And if you listen, to some of the great production by artists like Kanye or, or Timbaland. If you listen to some of the great musical production on an album like, like the, the Pimp a Butterfly or any of the music by The Roots, there's so much dynamism that is way too simple just to say it's a simple drum beat or it's just sampling. Which highlights another one of my favorite and I think most interesting things about hip hop music, and that's my number seven reason, is that it has improved over time. Hey, old heads, all of you out there, I'm 44 years old, okay? Just like Kanye, I'm 44 years old. I know, I know, man, I know. We had Biggie and Tupac and Wu-Tang. How could it ever get better? And then Jay-Z and Nas and oh my God, hip hop has never been as good as it was. I gotta tell you something, old people, and I'm talking to myself. I've been paying a ton of attention to hip hop for the past four years, and it has never, ever been better. Fear of a Black Planet, Jay-Z Volume 3, Strictly Business, Mr. Magic's Rap Attack, that's all great, but it has never been better, and this is why. As hip hop has maintained its cultural dominance, it has never lessened in dominance. The dominance of the cultural dominance of hip hop has been a straight line from 1976 until now. It's insane how much cultural power it has. And it has always maintained its mainstream. The mainstream has changed and evolved, and, and maybe the mainstream right now is not to your taste. You know, maybe maybe you hear whole lot of red and you compare that to volume three of Jay-Z and you go, well, come on. But the thing is this, healthy art forms have a dominant mainstream and an equal counterpoint in the alternative streams. They're equal. They're equal. Do you understand? There are so many parts of alternative hip hop. There's so many different branches. There's sort of retro boom bap, there's very conscious stuff, there's very jazzy stuff, there's very glitchy, there's very hyper pop. There's like a hundred different subgenres of dominant hip hop that are all very, very healthy, very, very successful, and continue to act as a counterpoint to that mainstream. Why is rock and roll dead? Rock and roll is dead because there isn't really a mainstream rock. It's sort of like a mainstream rock that's kind of adopted by pop. Now, the, the, the alternatives, the sort of indie rock, is as great as could possibly be. And if people were smarter and listened to Black Country New Road and Hippocampus, then we would have a very healthy mainstream rock and we could then have other art that goes against it. But that hasn't happened. We're just stuck with a lot of little tributaries and no Nile. Hip-hop right now, the Nile, the mainstream, can be alienating. It took me a long time to get into to Whole lot of Red. But the same year this came out, so did this. From King to a God by Conway the Machine. These albums are great, front to back. This brings up so much of what has been great about hip hop history while doing everything that hip hop has done as well as it can be done. This album is great. It is very futuristic, unsettling, bizarre, almost anti-music. This is the strength of hip hop. I could not hold up two albums like this for rock and roll for the past 30 years. I mean, I guess I could hold up Use Your Illusion and Nevermind by Nirvana and Guns N' Roses, but that was the last time. I think that was the last time I could really do this little experiment. So no, it's not getting worse. The old days weren't better. Hip hop, despite what people have said, is not only not dead, 
it is extremely alive. It has never been more alive. And part of the reason why is my eighth reason that hip hop is the most important artistic movement in human history is its adaptability and influence. And those things go together. It can adapt to changes, changes in how music is made. So first we have a sampler and a drum machine, and then now we're using Pro Tools and all sorts of computer mechanics, and it adapts. Sometimes it's more lyrical, sometimes it's more melodic, it just adapts. It takes from country, it takes from pop, it takes from rock, and then what happens? Rock and pop and country take from it. Have you listened to a top 40 country station in the last couple years? All the production, all of it. It just sounds like it was produced by a hip hop producer. Yeah, sure, they're talking about other stuff. They actually do talk a lot about trucks. That's not just a stereotype, that's actually true. But still, like you wanna see the power of hip hop. Every other genre, every other popular music genre is slowly taking it in or quickly taking it in and adapting to it. And that's the thing about the hip hop form is that it's adaptable. Soccer, not hockey. To start doing it, all you have to do is do it. It doesn't mean you're going to be good at it, but that's what you have to do. On the international scale, this is why it's so fascinating to study hip hop, is that it can also adapt like regional sounds, like folk music from centuries. It can adapt it and pull it all in. It is that postmodern perfection of the ability to take everything that human beings have ever created and recontextualize it and remake it into something else. Now, when we're talking about the influence and the adaptability, I need to take a second here. Those of you who have broken your fingers telling me, Sky, you're only talking about rap music, you're not talking about hip hop culture. I know, I know. So let me tell you other ways that hip hop is the most important artistic movement in human history. It's not just about the music, it's also about art. I've just been watching the excellent documentary about Andy Warhol on, uh, on Netflix. And by the early 80s, it was graffiti. It was hip hop culture that was dominating the art world. Like the two greatest artists of the last 50 years, like the last household names in modern art. I'm not counting Damien Hirst, okay? I love Damien Hirst, but he's not a household name. Keith Haring, graffiti artist. Jean-Marcel Basquiat, graffiti artist. That was like 40 years ago that happened. Where were you? Dance? Dance has been taken over by hip hop. The aesthetics, the moves, the development, it is all filtered in and completely changed the way dance is thought about. Fashion? Who even knew fashion was gonna be a whole part of it? Modern fashion is entirely in conversation with hip hop at the street level, and now, thanks to the work of people like West Side Gun and Kanye West and Jay-Z, it's actually at the high levels of fashion as well. The entire world of fashion for the past 40 years has been in reaction to or in collaboration with hip hop music. Cinema, perhaps the least changed by hip hop, is still very changed. The way things are filmed, and what themes there are, there's an entire genre of music, of movies called hip hop movies. Language. Oh, I'm a language professor, do you get me? Do you get me? How many words that you say come from hip hop? If you had a little, little clicker in your pocket and you counted them, you'd end up with hundreds by the end of the day. Our entire way of speaking, ever since hip hop hit the mainstream in 1979, has been based on, has sprung from hip hop music. Now that's nothing new. American culture has always taken the way that it speaks from African American culture. But it's the ubiquity of it. It's the responsiveness. It's the changing nature of it. It's all there. And by the way, I'm not just talking about America or about English. The same thing is happening in France. You have French people running around using French street slang that they learned through hip hop in their everyday French language, the most beautiful language. L'Académie Française is there and the Académie Française is powerless against French hip hop. 
against the power of these words, 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 words being con conveyed. The voice of the voiceless and the words that they used are then used by the powerful. Business has been changed by hip hop entirely. The image of what a successful business person is has largely changed in our, in our, in our country because of hip hop moguls. Performance art has changed. <laughs> Even performance art, thanks to artists like Kanye. Everything, the adaptability, the malleability, and the influence of hip hop is everywhere. So let's tie that into reason number nine. See, this, this malleability, this ability to move around, change, influence people, is tied into its longevity. 1976 to two th 2022, okay? Those are the dates that I'm giving for the existence of hip hop. It is arguable that it started a little bit before, a little bit after. I'm not gonna stop there. Let's compare that to rock and roll. Again, the starting date is, is debatable. Let's say it's Rocket 88 by Ike Turner from 1951 as the first real rock and roll song. If we were to take the same distance from the beginning of rock to current day as we are from hip hop to current day, that would put us in 1997. How many times had rock and roll died before 1997? Was it killed by disco, by new wave, by hip hop? How many times was it killed by metal, by hair metal, by pop? How many times has rock and roll been killed, been dead, had to be resuscitated? How many times have we had a celebration that rock and roll was back just to see it die again? Rock and roll does not have that malleability. <laughs> We were just about to enter the Limp Bizkit phase of rock and roll at this point. And hip hop could not be stronger, both in the mainstream and in the alternative streams. Let's just appreciate that. What other music has had that kind of run? I mean, okay, we can go back, I suppose, to Baroque and classical. But really, I mean, I suppose if we consider, if we treat soul music and R&B, as one continuum, that certainly has uh, a very long, uh, a very long influence as well. I don't think it has as much power across many different layers of society, and I also think that hip hop and soul itself has essentially been co-opted and wrapped in to hip hop culture. That's a whole nother debate. Feel free to argue with me in the comments. Oh, and like, smash the like bucket, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. The tenth and final reason why hip hop is the most important art form in the history of human history, 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 <laughs> history, I don't edit, is that it reflects all levels and parts of society. And that's why if you're sitting there and you're arguing with me because you're going, Sky, the Renaissance, the Renaissance, bro, the Renaissance, please put that in the comments, the Renaissance, bro. I know. I studied art history. I'm not even going to hit you with Raphael. I'll hit you with Masaccio. I don't care. I know about the Renaissance. It was great. What the hell did the Renaissance mean for most of the people in the world at the time? How much were they affected by the figural representations and the one point perspective as it was developed? Abstract Expressionism with Jackson Pollock is great. The Kooning, super, wonderful, great. What does that mean to some schmuck uh, just sitting uh, in, his, in his room in Iowa? Nothing. Hip hop is everywhere. It reflects and is for everybody at all levels of society in a way that no other art form has been. It is consumed for and made by the rich and the poor, the black and the white, the yellow, the brown, the polka dot, everything, by men, women, all genders. And at this point, I think that's its strongest, its strongest argument. I think I saved the strongest for last. There's never been an art, an art form which has changed everything at every level. Just taking fashion as an example, that's the easiest one. Louis Vuitton had to hire Virgil Abloh to stay relevant. Marshalls has to sell a certain kind of, of sneaker to stay relevant. It's all reflected through hip-hop. 
part of the reason why I think it is able to reflect all levels of society is that it promotes the American dream. And the American dream is an appealing dream, even to places that aren't in America, while simultaneously criticizing the American dream and pointing out its flaws. For every Jay-Z talking about how he made it, there's a public enemy saying how you can't make it in this racist society. In a similar way, it aspires to be post-racial. I think it does. I think there, that if we are going to live in a post-racial society, the music of that society will be hip-hop. But it never lets go of and stops addressing racism. And that goes across the globe. Perhaps the largest argument you can make against what I'm saying is that historically, hip-hop music has a problem with homophobia. It's true. With transphobia, it's true. With sexism, it's true. We could even say, with racism, it's true. The reason why hip-hop should not be judged and dismissed on that behalf is that that is the history of the music. The form of the music, by being so easily adapted, by being so easily adopted, means that those groups which first of all, hip hop has evolved and it is less sexist, less homophobic, less transphobic. And in time, it won't be those things at all or barely at all. But those people who were maybe marginalized by rap music in the past are also having the opportunity to make rap music in the future. There are, there are more gay rappers now than there were in the past and their voice is so important and is so heard, and is so revolutionary, and it's that power that hip-hop has to give it to them. That is where the strength comes from. So, there is 10 reasons why hip-hop is the most important art form in human history. I hope I've convinced you. I hope my dogs haven't been too loud. I hope if this is the first time you watch my videos, you check out one of, one of my others. You know, I don't usually do video essays. <clears throat> I usually just do reviews, but I tie all this stuff in. Like I try to tie in all my sort of big brainy thoughts into everything that I do uh, because that's what I'm adding. That's the value that I hope I'm adding to your life and, and to YouTube in general and to public discourse about music. So uh, I'm going to take another sip of my coffee. This is my merch, by the way. If you want it, it's a good mug. So until next time, there's, oh, okay, you, if you, oh my God, look, Toby's got, look at his teeth. Look at his teeth. Toby, you got goofy teeth. That's Bo. Sorry, whenever I say until next time, Toby wakes up because I usually walk them after the video. So whenever I say there's the camera, <laughs> Toby gets up. So right once I say this, he's going to hop up. Until next time, there's the camera. <laughs>